so we're going to start off with this spreadsheet on the left here and we've got our task on the right over here so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make sure that we've got question task 1.2 synoptic level 3 which we do so if you have a look at the top here that's one that we've got so the first thing we're being asked to do is to rename this to our initials with the date month year in the question so if I go to file at the top here go to save as find where I need to save this and rename this to mf dash dash today's date which is the 19th of the 11th 20 dot question task 1.2 synoptic level 3 and just click save it's telling us you must save your work as an XLS X file to avoid losing this. So just to double check, if you go to save as once more on the bottom here, you can type dot XLSX next to it. And if you click save again or click enter, this will say that the file already exists. Do you want to replace it? So you can click yes at this point, just to make sure that you've saved it down in the format that they're asking for in the exam. So next we can see that the company had originally budgeted to make and sell 40,000 units of bolted materials in the quarter ended the 30th of November. So note that that's three months, so September, October, November. However, it actually made and sold 55,000 units in this quarter. So we're being asked to calculate the percentage to flex this budget in line with the information about sales and insert this into D1. So what we need up here is to do equals 55,000 units divided by the 40,000 units that we had budgeted. So we want to flex this budget by 138%. So next, number four, in cell D3, we want to enter the title new budget. And then in number five, calculate the new budget for all of the relevant entries using absolute referencing where appropriate. So what I'm going to do is in D5, go equals C5. And I'm going to times that by D1. And I'm going to actually fix D1. Now, if you don't know how to do that, all you need to do is put a dollar sign before the column and the row and that will fix that cell so now if i drag this all the way down to here you'll see that d1 doesn't change but the row in column c does every time now the only thing that we need to change here is this because these are fixed so these are not going to change even if units change so i'm going to make those the same as what's in column c so that's something to be aware of when you're doing this in your exam. Next, number six, highlight the cells that are fixed in the blue of any colour. So I'm just going to go and use this little paint box at the top. Highlight those cells and colour them in blue. Now, in cell E3, enter the title actual. Okay, so we're down to number eight. Use copy and paste to take the actual results from the information that you've been given on the summary results file and place this in cells E5 to E14. So if we have a look at the summary results file here, we can see we've got the original budget and then we have actual results down here. So we want to select the actual results. So I'm just going to right click, copy and paste this in cells E5 to E14. So moving on to number 9. In cell F3, enter the title Variance in Quarter. Okay. And number 10, in column F, now calculate the variances for each revenue and cost. So all we're going to do is go equals D5 minus E5. 
I'm just going to drag that all the way down there. And in column F, now calculate, oh, we've done that one. <laughs> Number 11, in cell A17, type in the title operating profit review. So A17. Operating profit review, there we go. And calculate the operating profit for the original budget, the flex budget, and finally the actual results. So that minus the sum. If there to there. There we go. Now calculate the total variance in cell F17. So I'm just going to use this sum function here, which is under the home tab. And I'm going to just select those cells there and press equals. You can also do this by, if you type in equals sum, open brackets, and then select the information that you want to sum or total and click enter and it'll do the same thing. Okay, so number 13, use conditional formatting to highlight all non-favourable variances in red. So if I select this data in column F5 to F14, go to home, click on conditional formatting, highlight cells, and what we need to do is select anything that is less than zero in a red text so light red fill with dark red text click ok so you'll see here that this one is shown as a negative because our actual outweighed what we had budgeted everything else is less than budget now the only thing you need to be aware of here is that if they're asking you to do that with sales sales is obviously slightly different because if we budgeted higher sales than the actual then this here is also an adverse variance and go again to conditional formatting clear rules for selected cell go back to conditional formatting highlight cells greater than zero there we go now make sure that you're saving this as you go along as well so i'm just going to hit save up here so the next thing we've been asked to do is copy and paste the information in rows a5 to f14 all of this into A22 to F31. So A22 to F31. There we go. Number 15. Delete the rows that show fixed overheads administration. So that's this one here. So I don't know why we've been asked to do that, but we're going to do it. Colour cell F17 in pink. So if I select this, and again go to home, use this little bucket function here and then go to more colours and select pink click OK there we go so 17, make sure all column headings are in bold so column headings are here so if I select all of those, go to font, that's under home and click the B or I can use a shortcut on my keyboard and do control B where I can toggle that on and off like so. Next, produce a subtotal underneath each of the categories shown in column A in the new table. So this is the new table. So I'm just going to find the categories. So these are the categories here. So under each one of those we want a subtotal. So I'm just clicking on the row, right clicking and inserting, right clicking and inserting and I'm just going to copy that down and change that to say materials, change that to say labour, change this one to say variable overheads and then change this to say fixed overheads here. So that one's just going to be, I'm going to use sum just to select the one above. I know there's only one line but I'm going to do it anyway 
and here I'm selecting those three I'm just gonna copy and drag that along here there are two so I'm gonna do the same thing again make sure that it's only selecting the cells that you want it to and then there we go next format the subtotals so that each are in bold italic so if I do this just to one by clicking bold and italic or again I can use ctrl B or ctrl I on my keyboard I'm going to use the format paint option here and I'm just going to copy that to all of these subtotals just to save myself a little bit of time I'm going to save it again let's get into the habit of saving it just in case finally hide the detail to only show the subtotals and grand total not the individual components so we're going to have to put a grand total on this so I'm going to subtotal all of these up and drag that along there it's not asked me to format any of this so I'm just going to leave that as is and I'm just going to hide anything that's not a subtotal in this column I'm just going to check that total so you can see there that that does reconcile back so there we have it so I'm just going to save that again there we go and that's the end of that so all I'll say with these type of questions is just take your time take your time and make sure you're not rushing it so you don't miss something and just go down each one of them in turn very slowly just to make sure that you've done everything that they've asked you to do so thank you so much for watching i really hope that you found the video useful consider subscribing and i shall see you on the next video